by the spirit man we are. I always saw growing up that, that all the passages when Paul was talking about knowing by the Spirit and things like that, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. So I'm waiting for Holy Spirit to show up. Holy Spirit over there, would you show up? Holy Spirit over there, would you show up? Holy Spirit, would you teach me? <laughs> but His Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning at verse 9. As it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. That's why the church can't wrap its head around prosperity. Their mind can't conceive of it. That's why so many Christians struggle with healing. Their mind can't conceive of it. Well, how's He going to do that? How's He going to grow a limb back? So we stand around waiting for some kind of miracle. God doesn't operate on miracles. God calls things forth by faith when you speak into existence that which doesn't exist. But that requires taking a step of faith. That requires living in a dimension where you're seeing what others do not see. I love what, what Sherry prayed today, you know, about seeing what pe other people only hear and hearing what other people only see. You and I... You, you, you and I are meant to see sound. That's, right. That's, right. That's what it says they did in Mount Sinai. They saw the sound. How do you see a sound? Well, in the dimension of the Spirit, colors have sound, and sound has colors. In the, in the realm of the Spirit, that shouldn't be too hard. If, if you and I are operating at a higher frequency level, That's right. come on. We, we would be seeing and hearing things that others don't see and hear. Well, that's what walking in the Spirit is about. So listen to this. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him, but God has revealed it to us. He's revealed it to us by our Spirit. My, 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 my. By His Spirit. The Spirit, Holy Spirit, searches all things, even the deep things of God. And then he gives this analogy. Listen to this in verse 11. For who among man know the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know what you're thinking. But you know your spirit man does. That's why when you're born again, your spirit man knows everything that's going on. Your, your spirit man knows when you're lying. That's when it's why as, as Christians, when we sin, we feel so bleh. The spirit man in there is saying, not right, not right, not right, not right. Amen? It, it, it's like, you, it's tough to be a happy Christian when you're living in sin. Amen? Why? Because the spirit within you knows what's going on. In the same way, Paul says, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. So my spirit knows what's really going on inside of me. Well, the Spirit of God knows what's really going on inside of God. And then he goes on and says, We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. We're meant to have understanding. Verse 14, he says, The man without the Spirit. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them. That, quit trying to explain to someone who's not open to the Spirit of God spiritual things. They don't have a clue. That's, that's why I, I don't go to a, a, a pagan and say, well, you just need to have faith. What does that mean? You know? You just have, well, he, how can he have faith? He needs to get born again. Almost, see, all he can have is hope and then get disappointed. And there's a lot of people that say, I tried that, it didn't work. Well, that's because there was no faith involved. There was human hope involved. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Not mentally discerned. Not mentally discerned. It's amazing when you find uh, stories written to men and women of God who have no natural knowledge but walk in spiritual knowledge of natural technical things. A absolutely amazing. I mean, I, I, I love 
reading the story, one, one man who was involved in the computer industry, the Holy Spirit would continually show him things that were wrong, and he'd go fix them. He didn't understand how they worked or anything, you know? But they, he was an expert for one of the big companies, and he'd walk in, Holy Spirit would say, go back here, find this, look at this, there's a switch turned wrong, or this is, and he'd just follow Holy Spirit. He did not have engineering degrees. He did not have technical knowledge. He, he had Holy Spirit. Do you, can Holy Spirit tell you what switch needs to be turned? What thing? Sure he can, but how do we learn to hear Holy Spirit that well? See, that's the secret. I mean, can Holy Spirit do it? Absolutely. Ho Holy Spirit lives in a dimension, and so does your spirit, that is timeless. That's right. God takes dirt and he forms a body. That is time-bound. Right. That'll turn back to dust. That is time-bound. But he breathes into you the spirit and forms the spirit man out of himself. Well, what is, what is that spirit? It's eternal. In eternity, there's no time. That's right. That's right. It's all bound. It just is. You, you, <laughs> My spirit, my, my physical man, my soul, my physical man had to grow up. I grew in wisdom and stature, you know, like Yeshua did, okay? Uh, my soul had to grow. That's my mind and my emotions. So what did I do? I went to school. I learned math, okay? I, 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 I learned uh, algebra. I, I learned history. I learned facts and increased my mental knowledge of things, okay? That increased. And, and, and some of you know that's a hard way to learn, <laughs> Yeah, you keep applying, but you can. You can do amazing things. And, and, and just at a human level, you, the, the brain is created to, to furnish you everything you need. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. But my spirit man, let me ask you this. Does he get smarter? He, he's timeless. The, the spirit man, come on. If, 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 he's, if, the spirit, if the spirit person is increasing, then, it, then, then it, how can it be the Spirit of God? I'm going to come back to that. Let me finish this here. Verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Yes, indeed. doesn't say we're going to get. It says we have the mind of Christ. You know, we, we used to ask high schoolers, do you think that God understands the principles of nuclear phys physics? And many teenagers would say, no. God, God's religion. He doesn't understand science. Did, did, does the mind of Christ understand all that? We have the mind of Christ. What's he talking about there? That that's part of that spirit that we are. You know, it, it, it's, it's not time bound. So when we say, when we have an image that we're growing spiritually, how many, how many of you think you're growing spiritually? The truth is that all you're doing is increasingly yielding the soul to the spirit. Spirit's not growing. The growth is because you're now letting go of the flesh and adopt and letting the Spirit speak more, and so there's spiritual progress, but your spirit, man, is eternal and filled with everything. So the rabbis teach something that when I first read, I said, this is absolutely crazy. I could not wrap my head around it. And what am I doing? When I, when, when I say I can't wrap my head around it, what was I saying? I'm, I'm in my soul. I'm trying to... And here's what they say, that at creation... At conception, that the spirit being is brought into existence and knows and understands all of Torah. But after birth, you've read that, haven't you? But at, at, as they come birth into this planet realm, uh, they forget it all. Well, it's not that they forget it all. They're overwhelmed by the world, the soul, the body. A, a, a newborn baby, what is it? A newborn baby, baby is consumed with soul and body. <laughs> consumed by soul and body. Amen? And the soul's being formed. And, and I look at that and said, well, but that's crazy until I realize, no, 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 wait a minute. If God breathed a part of himself into you, does God need to take you and teach you to raw in heaven? No. You are an eternal being. In our time frame, it's here, but in God's time frame, your birth for eternity. You are a spirit created and formed by our Heavenly Father, and we must learn to live from the spirit man outward. 
outward, not from outward in. We let things out here speak in. We got to speak from the inside out. Now, in closing, this is what I think Paul's talking about in Romans 8. He says this, You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the Spirit who lives in you. He'll quicken you. He'll bring life in you if you call on it. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation. But it is not to the sinful nature to live in according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave to fear, but you received a spirit of sonship, and by Him we cry out, Abba, Father! The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. We are, not we're going to be. We are. The question, <laughs> who are you anyway? Who are you anyway? Come on. 1 Peter 2.9 says, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You are alive by the very breath of God. You are a child of the Most High God. You are a king and a priest. You are an ambassador for the Messiah. You are chosen. You are special. You are an object of God's love. And it's time that we live it. It's time that we live it. You are the most powerful thing this side of the veil. You are. A born-again child of God with a recreated spirit man that you are, you are the most powerful thing. You're more powerful, come on, you're more powerful than any natural force. When, when, when the Bible says that though a thousand fall at our left hand and ten thousand at our right hand, it will not come nigh us, it's not because we're sitting in a hole going, oh my, oh my, oh my, that it doesn't come. It's because we know who we are and we refuse to allow that to overcome us. We are speaking spirits. And it doesn't come because we have a promise in the Bible. That's logos. But because it's alive to us and we know who we are. Because if you don't know who you are, then who are you anyway? Well, I'm just another person. I'm just a, I'm just a teller in a bank. I'm just a bus driver. I'm just a, a clerk lady. I'm just a this. I'm just a that. No, who are you? Form. By God Himself. The very life of God is in you. You know? For a purpose to change the world. Come on. You need to get excited about it. Put a smile on that face. Let your body begin to say, Oh yeah, wake up body. Come on, be quickened body. Walk with purpose. Speak with purpose. Live with purpose. But the choice is yours. Choice is yours.